Hi, I'm Andy and this is question 5 on the AQA Core 4 paper from June 2016. For more questions on this paper, click the i in the top right corner. In question 5 we're given that sine a is root 5 over 3 and sine b is 1 over root 5, where the angles a and b are both acute. In part a1 we need to show the exact value of cos b equals 2 root 5. So if sine b is 1 over root 5, we can represent that using a right angle triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we can write 1 over root 5, and then we can use Pythagoras to find the other side. So we know that the hypotenuse squared, so root 5 squared, is going to equal 1 squared plus the adjacent side squared. Root 5 squared is 5, take away 1 is 4, and then if we square root it, we find out that a equals 2. Therefore, we can say that cos b equals 2 over root 5, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, if this wasn't an acute angle like is given in the question, we'd also have to consider the shape of the graph, because it could be positive or negative, but sine, cos, and tan are all positive between 0 and 90, so the answer here has to be positive. In part 2 it says hence show the exact value of sine 2b is 4 fifths. Well I can use the double angle formula to get sine 2b and we get 2 sine b cos b. This is one you should really memorise for the exam. You can derive it sometimes you're asked to in the exam so make sure you can do that as well. So here we just get 2 times sine b which is 1 over root 5 and then we're going to multiply that by 2 over root 5. So on the top we get 2 times 2, which is 4. On the bottom, root 5 times root 5, which is 5. So we get 4 fifths. In part B1, it says show the exact value of sine A minus B can be written as P, bracket 5 minus root 5, where P is a rational number. So we can get the formula of sine A minus B from the formula book. And we find we get sine A cos B minus cos a sine b. So up here we have sine b and cos b. We know that sine a is root 5 over 3. Remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we can write that as root 5 over 3. 3 squared is 9, minus root 5 squared, that's 5, so 9 minus 5 is 4, so we get 2 for the adjacent side again. That means we can write down cos A as adjacent over our partners, which is 2 thirds. So now we know all four values, we can substitute them in here. So sine A is root 5 over 3. Cos B is 2 over root 5. Minus cos A, which is 2 thirds, multiplied by sine B, which is 1 over root 5. Let's simplify this down. We've got root 5 divided by root 5, that'll cancel out. So we end up with 2 thirds minus 2 thirds times root 5 is 2 over 3 root 5. Let's rationalise the denominator for the second term. If you struggle with this, you can always get your calculator to do it just by simply typing it in. But if we times the top and bottom by root 5, we end up with 2 root 5 over 3 times 5, which is 15. Now all that's left to do is get it in the form we need. In a bracket, we need 5 minus root 5. If we look at the first term, we need something we can multiply 2 thirds by to get 5, but much easier. Just look at the second term. We've already got a root 5 here. What do we need to factor out? Out 2 fifteenths, and that's easy to check. If I do 2 fifteenths times 5, I end up with 10 over 15, which is 2 thirds, so that works. In B part 2, it says find the exact value of cos A minus B in the form R plus S root 5. Cos A minus B is given by the formula cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. That's in the formula book. So substituting in our values, cos A is 2 thirds, cos B is 2 over root 5. Sine A is root 5 over 3, sine B is 1 over root 5. And for this one, I'm simply going to put it into my calculator and let it do the work for me. So 2 thirds times 2 over root 5 
plus root 5 over 3 times 1 over root 5 which is 5 plus 4 root 5 over 15 well 5 over 15 is a third so I end up with a third plus 4 fifteenths of root 5